Biden administration extended the eviction ban so people can claim the assistance, but recent study shows 50% of renters do not know that they can qualify for rental assistance. Democrats released their $3.5 trillion budget resolution on Monday as they prepared to pass the $1 trillion bipartisan infrastructure bill. Lawmakers saying that unemployment benefits will not be further extended. Hello everyone, welcome back with another video from Money Pro. This is your daily news report and fourth stimulus check update. Democrats released their $3.5 trillion budget plan that sets the stage for a massive investment in social programs and climate policy. The plans fit into what Democrats consider a complementary, two-part agenda to boost the economy, strengthen the social safety net, and attempt to curb climate change. The party will have to carry out a complicated legislative dance to get both proposals through Congress in the coming months. First, the Senate will pass the $1 trillion bipartisan infrastructure bill as early as Tuesday morning. The plan, which calls for $550 billion in new spending on transportation, utilities, and broadband, is expected to get through the chamber with Democratic and Republican support. The Senate will then immediately move toward passing the budget resolution, Majority Leader Chuck Schumer told his told colleague senators in a letter on Monday. The measure would allow Democrats to pass up to $3.5 trillion in spending on climate policy, paid leave, child care, education, and health care without a Republican vote. Senator Chuck Schumer aims to approve the measure in the coming days before senators leave for their August recess. Democrats see the $3.5 trillion budget plan as the main event. In a statement on Monday, Senate Budget Committee Chairman Senator Bernie Sanders called it the most consequential piece of legislation for working people, the elderly, the children, the sick and the poor since FDR and the New Deal of the 1930s. Billionaires in America have seen their wealth increase by $1.8 trillion during this pandemic, while at the same time, thousands of essential workers died. Today and in the coming days, we are going to address the crises facing working families right here on the ground. I am proud to introduce a $3.5 trillion budget resolution that we will soon be considering, I expect tomorrow. This is a budget resolution that will allow the Senate to move forward on a reconciliation bill that, in my view, will be the most consequential and comprehensive piece of legislation for working people, for the elderly, for the children, for the sick, and for the poor that this body has addressed since Franklin Delano Roosevelt, the New Deal, and the 1930s. Madam President, this is a budget resolution that will address the needs of working families because we understand, if our Republican colleagues do not, that there is something fundamentally wrong when real inflation accounted for wages for working people has not gone up for almost 50 years. We have seen in recent years, as everybody knows, an explosion in technology an explosion in worker productivity. And yet, in real inflation accounted for dollars, while the very, very rich become much richer, real inflation accounted for wages for workers has not gone up in almost 50 years. What does that mean? It means the cost of health care has soared, cost of education has soared, cost of housing has soared, and yet, real workers, real, the working families of this country are earning in real dollars the same wages that they did decades ago, which means that many of them are struggling right now. This country in the history of the world, half of our people should not be living 
paycheck to paycheck, worried about how they're going to pay their rent or provide food for their kids. While the budget resolution does not go into explicit detail about many policies, Democrats saying their bill would include expansions of paid family and medical leave, a buildup of child care programs, extensions of household tax credits, including the enhanced child tax credit implemented during the pandemic, an expansion of Medicare benefits to include dental, vision and hearing, and a reduction in the Medicare eligibility age, an extension of increased Affordable Care Act subsidies, tuition-free community college, tax incentives and grants to encourage adoption of green energy, manufacturing and transportation, polluter fees on methane and carbon, consumer rebates to encourage clean energy and weatherization in homes, funding to increase the number of electric vehicles in the federal fleet. Democrats aim to pay for their spending plan through corporate and individual tax reform, along with increased IRS enforcement of existing rates. Democrats have previously raised the prospect of hiking the corporate tax rate to 28% and increasing the top individual bracket to 39.6%. The 2017 Republican tax law slashed the corporate rate to 21% from 35% and cut the top individual rate to 37% from 39.6%. GOP senators opposed any tax increases as part of the bipartisan infrastructure bill. A study from the Urban Institute found that over 50% of tenants and 40% of landlords are still unaware that the money is available. You can find out which local program to apply to with the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau's online tool or on the Treasury Department's website. Thanks to changes in the program, tenants applying for assistance no longer need to receive approval from a landlord. You can receive direct cash from the program even if your landlord is not cooperative. According to the Department of the Treasury, those eligible to receive the funds include low- and middle-income households and renters who lost money or are facing difficulty finding a new home due to the pandemic. If that applies to you, you should begin gathering documentation and submit a rent aid application as soon as possible. Senator Joe Manchin said that he would not support including an extension of federal jobless aid for gig workers and long-term unemployed Americans beyond Labor Day in Democrats' budget reconciliation package this fall. He said that, I'm done with extensions, the economy is coming back, the economy is stronger now, the job market is stronger, we're coming back. The moderate Democrats' refusal to endorse an extension effectively makes a renewal of the benefits impossible as all 50 Senate Democrats would need to support the bill for it to pass through the reconciliation process. That's the end of the video. Before you leave, please do not forget to subscribe our channel, also like and share this video. Thank you so much everyone, goodbye.